Hi, welcome to the Sew Along 2020 with the Australian theme. We're having um, lots of fun. We've already made one um, little set of blocks and today I thought I'd show you how to get started on some of the applique. So in your notes, if you've already purchased the pattern, you'll have this on gourmetquilter.com. So we're going to do this little emu block here. There's just one of these. Some, most of the others have um, more than one of each block. So I thought we'd just start with one. But what we can do is make the center part where the actual applique goes, we can get all of those ready for those 25 different applique blocks. So we could get all of those ready, maybe not all in one go if you don't want to, but so that they're ready when the applique blocks start coming through so that you don't have to do absolutely everything each time. It's always nice to have this little stash of ready things. So just to get started, in your notes again, you'll find that there is some instructions for just this. It's really just a snowball block. Those of you who know the snowball or your cutting information's in your pattern. I've got a, a bit here just to get started to show you. So we've got our main square and we're cutting. Again, the notes are telling you this um, in the first part, we cut lots of different strips. We labeled lots of different strips. You'll see some of them sitting on my desk over here. Um, and so we're just drawing from some of those. So the pattern will tell you when you're cu cutting from some of the other strips. And sometimes we have to use something new. Oh, there's a whole new concept. Um, and most of the applique, uh, sorry, most of the fabrics that were left from the strips will be for using up for your applique. So you can pick and choose your colors. You don't have to use exactly the same fabric I'm using. You have some say in this whole quilt. So back to our basic um, background for the applique. The snowball, it's a square and, a, and four smaller squares. So we put the four smaller squares on the corner, on the four corners, um, and we're going to stitch across them. So I would suggest that you find some way of marking them. You might have your own methods. I like to use my pencil and ruler and I do a line straight through point to point on the diagonal and then because we're, we're only needing that half of it, uh, we can draw another line if you're interested to do so and do half an inch away from that first line and sew between the two lines and then you can cut, sorry, you sew on the two lines, you cut between the two lines and then you've got a small piece left over that you could use in some other delicious project. So I won't go ahead and do everything but I'll just do the one. So I've marked my two lines, one right through point to point and one half an inch away and you can place them all and kind of go around in one go or, or in the case of where we're making um, all the block back for the backgrounds for the applique you could just chain piece them through which would get things done um, fairly readily for you as well. So just regular stitching right on that line Then you want to do if you want to keep that corner attached so that it's already a little half square triangle stitch again half an inch away and then you can trim them now if I had all four on there I'll just show you I am fortunate enough to have a rotary uh, cutting board you may not have one but you may have one if you have one this is a good time to use it if you don't have one you don't need one it's just one of those little things so I've gone ahead and I've stitched possibly all four on, currently only one. So because this board just turns, it's quite good for this sort of trimming where you're doing um, things where you want to sort of move it around. And so I'm just going to position it so that my quarter inch line is sitting on my main long sewing line, the full diagonal one. And I'm just going to cut between. So I can do that and then if I want to do the next corner, I can simply turn this reposition my ruler and cut it again and again without having to move any of the fabric you're just moving a ruler now it may not be a square ruler it might be any sort of ruler and and then you can just trim that off if you don't have a rotary mat then I would suggest that you can just trim it the normal way you're just going to lay again the quarter inch line over your stitching cut between the two sewing lines if you have to and you'll just need to turn that around and trim it that way. So that was really just a quick um, aside just to show you how you can use one of those mats in case you have one. If you don't have one, they are kind of fun. 
And then this piece that I've cut off here is quite usable. So this is the piece I'm suggesting that you could keep if you wanted to for some other delicious project. However, I've already gone ahead and made my blocks. I have um, one here, but I have actually made all the ones that we need for all of the applique blocks. So I've gone ahead and got my pile of those already in their little stash. I've got my folder that I'm keeping my notes in. These are my notes. Um, so I thought I'd, I could start showing you now a little bit about the applique, but before we move on to that, I'll just mention you're possibly wondering why we haven't done the surrounds for the block. Well, you can do those before or after you applique. However, for each block, there may be differences because of when we put them in the quilt. Have I got a picture of the quilt here? Yes. When we put the quilt together, because I've used, hopefully you can see this, because I've used two different colours for the background, a soft grey and a white, sometimes the grey comes into the block if it's around the outside edge. So sometimes the surrounds will be different and that information will come with each applique pattern that you get. So that if it's all the same and just the white background, which it will be for this emu, then it'll say that. If there's differences, it'll tell you what the differences are. So that sort of information will come as we go. The method will be the same. It's just using a couple of different fabrics at times. So we're now going to look at doing our applique. So you'll have your pattern to trace for your, for your emu and I've already traced all mine. I haven't cut it all out yet. However, I thought I'd just show you before I cut it out. So I trace it onto my paperback fusible web and I'm using a heat and bond light, although you use whichever one it is that you like to use or that you have to hand. Um, so I've traced it on and you just roughly trace it for, sorry, you just roughly cut it out after you've traced it so that then you can come along and cut it out on that line so that it's fused to the fabric and you're cutting through the paper as well. So I can go ahead and get all that cut and position it and start showing you how I've done all the stitching. So I've gone ahead, I've cut out my shapes, there's only three little shapes this time, and I've done the eye as a separate shape, you may want to just do it perhaps with a fabric pen, I'm going to applique mine. So I've, so when you take off the headpiece, I would suggest that you just mark the little cheek and perhaps an eye position on your piece. So you can probably do that by tracing it through with a light box or window light source behind it. Just a light mark with a pencil, you don't want anything too heavy. And then I'm just going to position the head down and iron it in place. And then I'm going to position the beak and the eye as well, and then I can do all the applique. So I'm going to do blanket stitch applique this time, because I think it's a good idea with something like this. And I'm just going to position that eye on there as well. So how, let's have a little look. Is he looking like he should look? So the beak sits right on the face, so the ends are just in because he's not really on profile, he's just looking sideways just a little bit. So have a little look and see that you're happy with the positions before you go ahead. And so now I'm ready to take it to the sewing machine to do the applique. The eye is quite tight for the blanket stitch, however, it's all good. So I'm going to be, I'll set my machine up. I'm going to use a dark coloured thread, so I've got a pretty dark sort of charcoal-y grey, which I'm going to use for all my applique. And I've got an open-toed foot. If you have an open-toed foot, that's really good. If you don't, you might have a clear see-through foot or something that you can use. Uh, and remember, it needs to allow for the swing of the needle if you're going to do something like a blanket stitch or maybe a zigzag stitch. So I'll go ahead, get my machine set up, and then I'll show you some of the applique stitching. Okay. So I'm just going to start the applique just where the beak crosses over onto the face and I'm just doing it so that um, I'm, I started there, sorry, I started there because when you get back to the beak you can go straight onto the beak without having to um, take everything out and start all over again. Now you may have a knee lift, I haven't got mine with me today because I'm standing and I find it harder to use. The knee lift on the machine is really good for this sort of work to just do this little lifting that I'm doing now. 
so that you want to turn your work fairly often when you're on fairly tight curves like some of these are. Every, every stitch if you need to. Um, I've just got myself onto the little blanket stitch. I have got the width at about just over two and the length is about 2.3 so slightly less than I would normally sew with on a straight stitch but it's stitching up really nicely and I can just keep going all the way around although you, I don't think you need to watch me doing all of it. Um, when I do the eye it's just a much tighter curve so you would need to lift every pretty much every stitch that you're going around so that your straight stitch is sitting on the outside just on the background and your stitch that comes in comes in onto the applique. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of that done and then I'm going to do, he's got some little squiggly hair and things and some marks on the beach and I was going to do those free motions so I'll show you how I do those. So I've gone ahead and I've finished all my applique stitching but now we need to do some of the details. Now I like to do those free motion. You might like to use a permanent marking pen and if you do I would suggest one of these mic, mic, sorry, whoa, Micron Pigma pens. They're really good. This is a black one. You can get them in different colours. Uh, just a fine liner so that you can do some little lines and dots and various other bits of details if you want to. Um, so on the, the emu here, he's got all these little hairs that stick out. If you can see them up here. So I free motion stitched all of those and a little bit of a sort of a cheek with some little hairs or I guess they're feathers and also a separation line on the beak. So I'm going to go ahead and do those free motions, so I'll show you how I'm doing some of that. Uh, you may, as I said, you may prefer to use a pen. The eye has got a little white dot on it, and I'll show you in a minute how I do that as well. So if you're not sure that you can just sort of free motion them, I have roughly very lightly drawn in. They're not, they don't need to be exact, these sort of markings. So I've just done some little lines just to give me a bit of a guide. If uh, you wanted even more help, you could always do it through a light box and trace it onto your light background just to give you some sort of an idea of where some lines might go. But uh, mostly they're just a little bit haphazard, so it, an indication of where is good, but not necessarily every little detail. So I've already done a couple of the little feathers on his head here. I'm going to do some more, and I'll do the little cheek so that you can see, because I can kind of do that one all in one go. You have to keep stopping and starting for these, and then there's a sort of next line that comes up in between as well. But uh, I think probably you, you know how to do this, but I'll just do a couple just to show you anyway. So I've got my free motion foot on, I've dropped my feed teeth, and I'm ready to go. The only other thing is, usually when you do free motion just on fabric without anything behind it, you really do better if there's some form of a stabiliser. So you could put a piece of uh, tissue paper behind or some other form of stabiliser. Or in this case, I've actually just done some spray starch on the cloth just to give it a little bit more body because I'm not doing a huge amount. Um, otherwise, the, the fabric can kind of scrunch up a little bit. So I just do a couple of stitches to lock it at the beginning. And then I can just wiggle around and just follow some wonky lines and come back on itself and then a couple more stitches to lock it off before I trim off the fabrics. I think by coming back on yourself it gives it just a little bit of extra definition. I've still got that dark fabric, sorry, threading that I use when I'm doing the applique. I'll do one more of these. So if I was doing one to come up in between I would be coming down further on his head here, and the same sort of thing, but just coming into the background area a little bit. It's kind of fun to do this, it's a little bit of wiggliness that doesn't really matter how, how it wiggles. Um, on the beak, I would be coming up pretty much it's almost at the point of the beak, but not quite, because the top beak just overlaps, and I'm just going to come along that line there and then I'm going to go back again but I'm going to turn the work so that I can see because I really want to stay on the line this time. And again that double line just gives extra definition particularly when we're on something particularly dark like this one. And then this little cheek has got some little feathers coming from it as well. So we'll just do that one as well. So again I've lightly penciled that in.
and I'm going to just as I come to where I might do a little feathery line and it's again it's just one of these little wiggly lines and then back onto the cheek line then another one of these and they can just wander all over the place. He's definitely having an interesting hair day this little emu. And so it's as easy as that. It doesn't take very long. It's kind of fun. There's a few threads. Because I've locked off, I can just snip my threads. And you could take them through to the back and tie them off if you wanted to. But I feel that the locking does a good job. And you may find that it just wants to pull a little bit, but a, a good steam iron will just help pull that out again. I need to finish those off and I can do that afterwards, but I'll just show you at the moment how I mark his eye. Now the, the, there's a little white in his eye that just gives him a little glint. So I'm going to go ahead, oh he has eyelashes too, I would do those the same way with the free motion stitching. So if you're going to put a little sparkle in the eye just to give a little bit of expression, I find a white gel pen works really well. Gel pens are, are generally per permanent on, um, on fabric and it's really just a little dot with a pen. And just make sure that it's got in nice and white and I think you'll find that that just gives a little bit of expression where really there's not really much to express. And that will just dry permanently. So all I need to now do is continue finishing off my um, little feather lines and give them some eyelashes and then I'll show you how to do the, the border onto the block as well. So I've finished all my free motion stitching on my block here. I think he's looking pretty good. He's definitely got a, his own viewpoint on the world. He's definitely having an interesting, possibly a bad feather day, but maybe that's a good feather day. So I've already got one up here. So now we need to just pop the surrounds on to complete the block. So I've gone ahead and got some bits started here. So what we're trying to do is make four of these to go around the sides. And what that gives us is this kind of nice, almost circular type look of the little triangles going around. So in your notes, it tells you what size to cut and, and things. And as I mentioned earlier, some of the blocks will have a slightly different color. They'll have this gray instead of the white in some places, but that will come with the block as it, as it needs to. This guy, he's on his own and he's just all white. So we need to pop uh, these rectangles on, on the angle so that we get the, the triangle shape. So what I'm suggesting is that you can just mark, now you could just do it with a, a pencil like I normally mark things, but because we're not going to another point, I recommend that you perhaps finger press and then if you want to draw the pencil line as well, you can do that too. But just fold one corner over so that the, that edge is level and that will give you that half shape. That may be enough to see when you're putting it on or you might want to draw it a line as well because it's quite hard on the white fabric. You need to do, uh, for the four sides, you need four folded one way so that they're coming in that way and you need four the other way, they, they opposite so that they make the triangle. And then once we've got all that sorted, we can start sewing a piece on. So we're going to line it up and there's diagrams in the notes so that if you're wanting the, well I've, I've probably got it upside down for me because I would probably normally look at the triangle that way for myself. However, we're going this way. So you have the top coming up into here and it's going to flip back like that. So we're going to sew on that line and then flip, trim and flip. And then we're going to do the other side. So I'll go ahead and start sewing. Now, because of the pieces sitting behind where the point is and you've got the fold through to there, if you're still not 100% sure you can start in the right place, you could start from up this end. Or you could just mark that point there with a pencil so that you've got the right starting point to come up on your diagonal line. So I'll go ahead and I'll stitch that. So right on that marked line. And before you trim it off, you want to just flip it back and make sure that it is going the right way. Well, the first one probably is. The second one is more important to make sure about. I'm just going to trim that seam a quarter of an inch away and I'm going to press it. And I'm going to press that seam, the first one, into the darker color, the triangle fabric. Now the next one we have to put on, we have to get right. 
So th there's a tendency to want to do this sort of thing, in which case that won't help you at all. You need to be coming from the same direction each time. And you want to position it so that your top corners are matching up here. And it's going to overlap in the middle in there so that you've got a seam allowance so that your point should come out to the seam allowance amount. So again, if you need to mark the little starting point, although you might want to start from up here this time, it doesn't really matter where you start and stop as long as you've got the piece in the right place. So I'm actually going to start up here and come down to that point down there. And again, before you cut anything, just make sure that it's right and it's looking pretty good. And then just again trim that and press that. Now this time, last time we pressed the seam into the triangle, this time I'm going to suggest because of the, the point up here it gets quite hard to press that over, so I'm just going to suggest continuing to press in the same direction. And there we have a nice triangle set into our side. So now that we're at that point, we have four of those, we've got to make four sides and two of them will have a square on the end. So we've got our little squares in our requirements for the block. So pop your squares on the ends of two of them and the other two we're going to put those on the sides. I always work sides first then top and bottom. So I'll do the same with this. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my sides on and then the top and bottom and I can show you when the blocks are finished. Everything should fit pretty well, everything's done to size and it all works out amazingly. So I've sewn my four sides on including the two with the corners as well. So when I stitch them on and press the seams, I've pressed the seams into the border. So when I sewed the corner squares on to these sides, I sewed those also into the border so that I could nestle the seams at the points there. But you can see everything kind of sits really nicely. These points all look pretty good. So here we have a little emu with wattle fabric, so perhaps we'll call it wattle emu. And that's this block done for this time. So you can go ahead if you uh, want to and get all the background areas done ready for appliques for the future blocks. Other than that, we'll see you next time with the next block. Thank you.